All right, welcome back, everyone. We're still here at uh, NYC uh, Job Fair with ISS. Uh, this is SED Learn, Mike here, and we have yet another school to come and talk to us and showcase where they are, uh, what they're doing, and where they're headed in the future. Uh, so with us, we have Don here, and I'll let him introduce himself, and then we'll get the questions going. Don, talk to me. Yeah, they call me Dr. Don at CAG, or Colegio Americano de Guatemala, or the American School of Guatemala Hornets, right. and I've been there for seven months, and my my deputy head's been there for 28 years, and everybody loves Guatemala, so I expect I'll be staying a long time. Oh, okay. So the weather outside is warm, right? The weather, it's the eternal spring. Okay. So you can't beat that. All right. It's really nice. It's the culture of the school, the eternal spring as well. The culture of the school is the eternal spring, and actually, uh, we're, we're very student-centered. Uh, choice and voice for our students is very important, and if you come to our campus, beautiful pine trees, green grass. And our classrooms, uh, you know, we all learn from the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So during the pandemic, we built pergolas on the back of all of our classrooms. And so the classroom setting extends to the outside. Kids are often on picnic benches. So your classroom is not only in the four walls, uh, but really it's it's all around campus. And uh, one of my board members, we did a little um board trustee day where they toured the campus a few weeks ago said this is like this is like a college campus it's like a university campus it's got a good feel it's got a good vibe it is the eternal spring <laughs> any events or cultural affairs that goes on over there that sticks out to you yeah. absolutely so we have our big independence day celebration in september you get to eat guatemalan food uh, there's a big parade where the students and staff run in with the torch they run around the track, they, they light uh, a big fire, and then there's speeches, and there's songs, and there's performances, and it's a lot of fun. And of course, the food, the food of Guatemala is excelente. It's very, very good. Also, we have our um, International Day. We just had that a couple weeks ago, where parents come into all the elementary classrooms, and the, the kids rotate with their passport through 15 different countries, they get to eat the food, do an activity, do a craft, do a game, and they get to learn about all these different countries, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, so, yeah, we have a good time. We have a lot of fun events. And in December, we have Noche de Luces. Noche de Luces is pretty awesome. The whole community comes together for a big celebration at night where the kids are performing and there's food from all different countries. And then we have, uh, at the end of the night, uh, this year, we had a drone show that had a light show. Oh, nice. And then we have fireworks. And I'm used to the 4th of July fireworks, Mike, in the States. And so I kept thinking, this is the finale of the fireworks. And then it kept going. <laughs> oh, this must be the finale. And then it kept going. And it was the longest fireworks display I've ever seen in my entire life. 4th oh, of wow. July didn't compare to it. So wow. it was pretty awesome. And it was great to see the whole community. We're about 1,800 students. So we have a large community. So it's, I think we had around 5,000 people on campus at Noche de Luces this year. So a lot of fun. Dr. Don, you spoke to us about the parents. Speak to us a little bit more about that. How do you incorporate the parents in about? Community of the school. Our parents are, are super important. We're, we're a legacy school. We've been around for 80 years. And so we have parents and grandparents that are often on campus, and we try to involve them as much as we can. We had a middle school showcase last week where we had parents and grandparents coming in to see our sixth, seventh, and eighth grader projects. One of the projects that was really cool was our seventh graders did a, a migration genealogy project where they presented where their family came from and when they came to Guatemala or wherever they ended up in. And uh, you had grandparents and parents coming to those presentations. It was really cool to see how involved they were. But also we've noticed since the pandemic, our parents have, have been super involved in trying to learn more about how we can meet uh, the social emotional needs of our students. And so we have book clubs for parents and the book clubs have been very popular. A lot of parents have been attending. Uh, some of the parents um, keep asking me, oh, I went to the first book club for middle school and I didn't show up at the next one. They kept saying, where, where were you going? I said, well, I haven't done my homework with reading. So I can, they were like, you're always welcome, even if you don't do your reading. But the parents are super supportive. They're super excited. Uh, they're, 
they're good. I mean, the kid, our, we have the best kids in the world. I, I know other schools might have good kids, but our kids yeah. are awesome. And so that's where it starts is with the students. Oh, nice. Uh, I guess I wanted to jump ahead into the future a little bit here, um, especially with how we see technology just rolling in, and rolling out sometimes. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So exactly how does your school implement um, new technologies if that is something that you guys do? Well, we've been having a lot of conversation as have everyone about AI and how that's going to fit into our innovation at the school. We're currently embarking on a master facilities project that will start this summer with the building of a new middle school. And then we'll be building after that an innovation center. And one of the things that we talked about, we're going to have a steam lab, culinary arts lab. Uh, we're going to have a robotics lab, fashion design lab. Uh, but one of the things we've really been talking about is beyond the technologies that we're bringing in this innovation lab, how do we build our programs currently so that when we move into these new buildings, we're already innovating every day. And so for, for our students, it's not necessarily about hardware and software. It's about innovation. It's about project-based learning, problem-based learning. Uh, looking at a problem, finding a solution, service. We have a CAG Gives Day a couple days every year, actually. We're, we have our next one in April, where we're involved with five or six different partners around the country that help develop um, areas that need to be developed. We have a, a mission with the foundation we belong to, where we're trying to help teachers in Guatemala improve so that we can improve education in Guatemala. So we have teacher induction program where we take Guatemalan teachers, they come to our campus for a year, they co-teach with our teachers, they, they learn from our professional learning, and then they go into their public school their second year, and then they come to our campus every afternoon after they go to classes and they learn with their professional learning. And we also have a Young Scholar Academy. So these are innovations that we, we, we feel like these are the technologies that we want to improve is having our students be involved in innovating and supporting uh, bigger things than themselves, right? And as, as a part of that, uh, we try to give our students as much voice and choice as possible. So they start a lot of their own clubs. We have a TED Talks for our high school students every year. Students organize it. Uh, we have one advisor that just helps them out a little bit, but really it's the students that organize it. They do the cuts. 10 of them get a present each year in a TEDx talk at the school. And the kids do it all. Like they have the tryouts, they they give the bad news to the students that didn't make it. They give the good news to the students that didn't make it. And then they perform. We have mini masters, so we have three trimesters. So between each trimester, um, we do a week where there's no classes, the regular classes. The kids have two classes one in the morning and one in the afternoon and their classes on whatever they might be interested in. And so if they want to do culinary arts and they go to the Universidad de Valle de Guatemala, which is part of our campus and do culinary arts, they can do that. But also the kids teach mini masters. It's not just the teachers teaching things that they're interested in. It's the kids teaching it. Right. Which is pretty cool. Right. My son is going to teach magic the gathering cards at this next mini master i would never take that course but some of his friends will right, right. but they're teaching what they're interested in and i think that's what we want to do is we want to find kids passion and help them discover it and help them uh, have the opportunity to live their dreams right yeah no no that's that's powerful giving them that chance to do that um given that empowerment um they do the same for the teachers, you know? Is there room for teachers to kind of grow in their careers as they step in? Absolutely, absolutely. That's one of the things that I've noticed since I've arrived at CAG is that our teachers have a lot of opportunities to grow and to be able to develop themselves. Uh, our current lower school principal uh, started as a teacher at the school and then was an instructional coach, then was an assistant principal, and now, now she's the principal. And that's a pattern that's not just a one-off. It's many of our teachers have had opportunities to grow and learn. We have department chairs, we have grade level leaders, instructional coaches, uh, learning specialists. And so we find a place that a teacher might wanna develop 
and then they're able to develop in that in that place. And really, that's what we're about is is if someone wants to develop themselves and learn more about a certain area of education, we want to give them that opportunity. And we've noticed that our teachers like to stay at CAG forever. They they want to be there. They want to stay. And uh, it's all about the Hornets, right? <laughs> Must see something that's there. Could you speak to the diversity of the school? You know, sure. I think you really want to show those metrics. Uh, yeah, so um, we have about 80% of our students are Guatemalan, and then 20% are from other countries. Um, some of those countries are in the region in Central America or South America, and then the U.S. would be uh, the largest percentage of kids other than Guatemalan. Uh, we have quite a few kids from the U.S. Embassy that attend our school because it is a bilingual school, and so they can learn Spanish. And then in addition to that, uh, we have some Korean students and then some students from other countries. So we're we're not extremely diverse. We have kids from 25 different countries, uh, but I would say the majority of our kids are from Guatemala and they come to us in pre-K and they stay for 14 years. And uh, our goal is still the same. We want them to have meaningful lives. All of our kids, when they graduate, we want them to experience a meaningful life. Don, for those that still want to know about the mission of tuition, want more information, where exactly can they go to get that? They can go to our website. So if you just look up Colegio Americano de Guatemala um, or the American School of Guatemala, you'll find our website. Uh, you can Google it, AI it, whatever you want to do, and uh, you'll you'll find us there. There's information about recruitment there too. If you're interested in joining our community, there's a there's a page that's dedicated just to that. We have our promotional video on there also and Anything that you need to know and contact information, you can find it there. Go Hornets. <laughs> Go Hornets. Thank you so much, Don. All right, yeah. guys, we're still here and we're going to take a short break uh, during lunch. Need to go get some food into my system and we'll be back around one o'clock. See you soon. All right, educators. Bye bye. <laughs>